Hey guys, now in this video, I wanna show you how to create this infinite zoom effect. Now you can easily apply this to your own clips, but the clips that I'm gonna be using for the tutorial I've sourced from Envato Elements, who are the sponsor of today's video. Now they have a ton of stock videos and elements you can use in your own projects. And if you're interested, then you can use the special link down below to get 50% off an annual subscription. So this is the clip that I've sourced from Envato Elements to use in the tutorial. And I've just dropped it in a new composition here. Now, the one thing I've been looking for for this particular clip, or the type of clips that work really well, are ones that have an opening. Now, it can be anything like this window over here, or it could be this circular window here, but it doesn't have to be in the center of the screen. We can zoom into any part of the video. So the first thing I need to do is I need to work out where we're going to start the transition. So Back here, I'm just going to split this clip and I want to basically come over to time and just freeze frame that second clip. Now, what we can do with that second clip is we can start to basically mask out that window. So I'm just gonna grab my ellipse tool here and I just want to draw out a part of the window that I basically want to cut out. And I'm also just going to add an invert for that as well. So this is what we end up with here. We've got that part of the window basically masked out. Now the next part is we want to basically make this a 3D layer and then zoom our camera through that. So I make it a 3D layer here and I add a new camera. And what you want to do is basically take that layer and we're just going to duplicate it. And then I want to move that second layer back in Z space and just reposition it here. Another thing I can also do is if I grab my pan behind tool, I can also reposition that anchor point to that middle layer. And that'll just make it easier to control those layers that we're creating behind, right? So we're trying to create a bit of an opening in the window as it's zooming through. The other thing I can also do is just, if I bring up the rotation, I can also add a little bit of rotation just to keep staggering these as the camera moves forward. Now with the camera movement, what I also want to do is I want to basically create a keyframe for the point of interest and the position and then start by moving forward on my timeline and start zooming the camera right through basically that opening. So as I bring my camera back, we can basically start to position this. So the camera is basically flying through that opening, right? So we're kind of moving the camera into position here. So I've just created a few keyframes. And now it's just a matter of rinse and repeat. So we just take that next layer, we duplicate it, add a bit more rotation, and then just move this back in Z space. Space, reposition it here so we kind of end up with this movement like that. I'm gonna take this layer again, duplicate it, and then just reposition it here, right? So that's all we're doing. We're just creating this, basically this window that we're zooming through. The other thing I can also do is I can add a bit of rotation to our camera, which is kind of interesting. So if I add a bit of Z rotation here, I can just basically come back here and create a keyframe and then add a little bit of Z rotation. So if I maybe make this 180, then that means that as the camera is now going through, it's basically rotating as it flies through. The other thing you can also do is if we take all those layers, we can add motion blur for all those layers and now when we fly through, it's basically added that nice motion blur effect over the top. Now the best part is once we get to this point, we don't have to go and basically keep adding layers. We can take those layers behind, duplicate them and just off center them. So now we've got basically a full tunnel as we're flying through. Now to transition into that movement, another cool thing I did was I added basically a rotation of that opening so it basically rotated out of the way like an opening of the door. So to do that, what you can do is you can take that background layer and move it up to the top. Just extend this out very slightly here. What I'm going to do is make that a 3D layer and then I can basically take that mask from my other layer. I can just copy that and paste it over the top. Now what I want to do with that, I just want to cut out the window. So if I go down to those mask settings, I can get rid of the invert and now if I just of that you can see we just have that window layer and that's all we want. You might need to just reposition your anchor point here but if you create basically a Z rotation and position keyframe there and then if I create a bit of a rotation like this 
you can have this basically roll out of the way, something like this. So you kind of get that movement of it rolling, something like that. The other thing you have to do though, is you have to hide that layer behind something. So to do that, what we do is we basically duplicate that layer, go to the mask and invert. And what we want to do is basically remove by hitting you, I want to remove the position and the, and the Z rotation off that layer. The other thing you can do is also drag in on that window layer underneath. And if I take the top layer, I can basically just split it at that point, drag it up and then remove the mask off that. So it'll basically transition like this. So as it starts, it basically then goes like that. The other thing is you might be getting some little parts down on the bottom of your screen that are kind of sticking through like this. One easy fix for that is you can basically just take this top layer here and just add a motion tile over the top and then just extend the, the width and the height and add a mirror edge and that will help hide the edges of that frame. So once you're ready, you can just turn on motion blur. I've just had it turned off just to hide all those edges as the camera is sort of zooming through because it uses a lot of processing power to get there. Now for the background clip, I sourced mine from Envato Elements and this can be whatever you like. I found that when I was searching through the huge database of stock videos that an overhead drone shot like this one works best, but really it's anything that'll help match the perspective of that camera movement. So as the camera's flying through, you just want something to kind of match. Now I personally think it's a massive advantage having access to something like Envato Elements because without a doubt at some point in your personal projects, you're going to reach a point that you just need a clip or an element to really make it work. So to have unlimited access to over 55 million assets, such as fonts, photos, video templates, WordPress themes, and Adobe templates, it just makes projects a whole lot easier. Now, once I searched through the database and I found the particular clips that worked for this project, I then just downloaded them using the one simple license that still counts even after my subscription has ended. Now, also you would have seen in the intro, I added a little fire burn transition. And I thought it'd be really nice to have some sort of like embers over the top. So I just searched embers and sure enough, there was a ton of different ember clips that were ready to use. Now, if you're also interested in giving Envato Elements a go, you can use the link in the description below to get 50% off an annual subscription, giving you access to everything all for less than $20 a month. So now back in my composition, all I've done is I've just repeated that same opening of the door. I've just put that basically to the back of my layers here, moved it back in 3D space, and I've just animated it out. So it kind of basically completes the tunnel. Now, with the idea with the infinity zoom is you can keep repeating this as many times as you like. So you just keep adding layers over the top. So I've got my next clip here that I got from Envato Elements. And then all I need to do is just drag this straight in underneath. I can make this 3D and to get it into the right position, what you can do is take the position property of the last opening here, take that, hit P on the keyboard and paste that into that layer. I can basically control my camera as well as my background layer. So if I move this back in 3D space, I can also just shrink this down. So you see, we kind of end up with that effect there. I can even scale this up a little bit, just reposition it until you're sort of happy there. And the other thing you can also do to that layer is you can also add the motion tile onto that background layer, scale up the width and the height there, mirror the edges, and that'll help hide that effect. And then what you can do overall, you can make sure that all those layers have motion blur turned on. And then at this point, it's really just about finessing the camera movement. So to do that, all you need to do is basically take all those keyframes, you can make them easy ease. Now with the top two, the position and the point of interest selected, I'm gonna to go to the keyframe interpolation and I want to set this to be continuous Bezier and for the spatial interpolation, I want that to be linear. Now that'll help smooth out that movement as far as the speed's concerned. But what it also allows us to do, if we come into the speed graph editor, we can drag up on these middle points and that will also help smooth out that entire animation. So you can see it's just helping basically to control the overall movement. Now, if I drag out in the camera start position and end, it will also 
help just reposition that camera and the movement. I can even off center this Z rotation. So as the camera starts zooming in, I then want it to start basically that animation of the rotation and then right through to the end. So we kind of end up with that movement and it looks really nice just the way it is. Then when you're ready, all you need to do is just turn on the motion blur tab and then you can render it through just to see how that animation's playing through. Now this is quite taxing on your system and you can hear my computer's probably taking off in the background. So you probably wanna try and render it on a lower quality setting by changing this down here or just rendering it without the motion blur and that'll help you know, just sort of get that camera movement right before you start rendering it out. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you've picked up a few tips and techniques that you can use in your own videos. Thanks for Envato to sponsoring this video. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can also check out more videos over here on the side of screen. Thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next video.